All right, so a lot of times when I do a pie hosted series, you guys comment usually about firewalls or opening a port or how do I host this outside of my network? Well, I got a solution for you guys without having to have access to your firewall. So let's check it out. So I've been down the rabbit hole of trying to figure out some web hooks or hosting stuff without having to use your firewall, basically bypassing it, as well as not having a permanent URL versus something dynamic like your IP address. Now, if you're a home network user, uh, chances are the IP address that you're using is dynamic and it will change over time, which is something you do not want when you're hosting a service. So I have this website, which I'll leave a link down in the description below to a GitHub where they talk about awesome tunneling. There's a bunch of stuff here that I actually used before, like ngrok, I think that's how you pronounce it. I've used that before, the commercial version. Uh, while that is a great product, even though you can use it free, uh, the free version doesn't provide you with the static URL. It changes like every two hours or it changes every time you restart the service, which is again, not something we want. Um, there are a lot of open source alternatives and you don't have to pay for any of those. So you could go down this list and see what you would like to use. If you're gonna use this on a production environment, I would recommend using you know, closed source or commercial versions. This way you could get more out of the service. But what we're gonna be using basically is something called Telebit. Now I tried out these two, Telebit, um, Tunnel, P, Python Jam or Pi Jam. Uh, I think I tested the NROC number, uh, version number one and there was this PG Rock, which is the same version of NROC, but it's updated code. So there's a bunch that you could play around with, but I, I have the best experience with Telebit. So that's what we're gonna be checking out. Now, the installation of this is super easy. All you have to do is just run one code and it'll actually get you through the whole process. So I'm gonna take this and I am running Arch Linux right now. Um, I did run this on my uh, Ubuntu Pi hosted server. So that's already all set up to use this, but I'm gonna be testing this out on Arch Linux just to see if it's gonna run on this and it's gonna be a new prompt and everything. So it's easier to just go through the step-by-step -step tutorial. So I'm gonna paste this and I know you guys say I could use middle click and all that other stuff, which is true. I can use uh, middle click to paste. Um, I just like to show the full, you know, right click paste uh, so you know exactly what I'm doing. Now this is gonna actually run the command and install everything and create a service. While this is running, I'm actually gonna go through their Git since this is open source you can find out all this information. So the breakdown of it is, if you go through installation, as soon as you run this command, what the installer does is basically installs the app to um, your home directory, application Telebit, makes a symbolic link to whatever directory you ran it in, and also creates a Telebit service so it boots up with the system. Also creates uh, user local uh, config files, and that's basically it. Now, once this is done, you're gonna need an email, um, again, I found this service to be the best. That's why I'm using this one. Uh, if you wanted to try something like tunnel.pyjam, this doesn't require email, but it does use uh, WireGuard instead. It does a whole different thing. You can do that, but it doesn't create the service for you. It doesn't create the startup stuff. Uh, I find Telebit just a little bit easier. Anyway, for as far as the email goes, I'm not gonna use my personal email right now. So I'm gonna use tempmail.org. And here I could just grab the email that I want and kind of just use it. Now, the reason why you need the email is because you want to retain the static URL. So if you're gonna install this exact software on a different server like the Raspberry Pi or your NAS or something, you want to be able to obtain the same URL again. So that's why the email is actually needed. You also need access to the email because you have to answer a prompt. Now I'm gonna paste my email here, which I'm never gonna remember, but you should copy it down doesn't ask for password or anything. It just needs to register this to your email so it could link up the permanent URL. I'm gonna wait for this to come in. You see how it just makes that Telebit wizard. It gives you this, you can confirm the email here and it'll bring you straight to your new URL. Oh, actually, nope, I gotta put in that code first. What is it? 3461, 3461. Agree to this, agree to this, and there you go, I can claim it. So now, I'm Shaggy Moose. Okay, I actually like that name. <laughs> so now everything we do here will be redirected to Shaggy Moose. So that is it. We have the whole thing set up. And if you look, I have a program called Telebit right here. And it will run, start up with the system. So you don't have to actually 
like worry about if you it will survive a reboot. If you do plan to install this on your Pi hosted server, just install it as a server in the server itself, not as a Docker. Now, what you're gonna do is say you're gonna host something. Um, there's a couple of things you can host. Let's go through the whole setup. Here's the remote usage prompt where it will help you. You can actually go to the main website and it'll tell you the same thing just in like a layman's version. But what you basically want, if you want to host something that has a website, you would want to use um, whatever port it is and HTTP. If you want to host something TCP, say like a Minecraft server or um, remote desktop session or something like that that uses TCP, that's what you would use this prompt for. Remember also none will disable it. So it will stop forwarding the IP address. I mean, stop forwarding the port to that uh, service. Now I plan to use this on a Nix cloud server and also uh, some other stuff. But if you want to be able to bypass all your firewalls because you don't have access to it, or if you're in a dorm, or if you just don't want to play around with your firewall or a permanent URL, this is the best way to do it. Okay, so because I'm not hosting anything on my service right now, so uh, again, this should be actually installed on my Pi hosted server, but to show you the example of what I'm doing here, I'm just gonna quickly run something. Uh, so I'm gonna do Python, let's do downloads. Do I have anything downloads? Let's uh, go to pictures, no, documents. And do I have anything hosted here? Only my black magic. Uh, let's do touch test file. Okay, and what I'm going to do here is Python, there you go, dash M server, and this will be port 8080. Okay, so now I am hosting a makeshift Python HTTP server on port 8080. And what I'm going to do now is go back to my little file over here called Telebit. I am going to run Telebit HTTP 8080. So Basically what this little command does, is it's gonna tell Telebit to host locally uh, whatever's on port 8080 to that specific uh, URL or that static URL that you created. So now it's forwarding this to localhost port 8080. And I'm gonna grab this, copy this link, and if it all works, it should just be hosting a directory with two files in it. And there you go, my Blackmagic design and that test file that I created. So now it literally just passed, bypassed all my firewalls. It didn't, I didn't have to configure anything and I was able to get a permanent URL. Now, again, I done this on my Raspberry Pi, which uh, I got a different URL for, and it works just the same. Now, if you're planning to host a Minecraft server or something that has no UR, uh, HTTP interface, uh, that's when you would use TCP. Well, anyway, that is it for this quick little tutorial on how to bypass your firewalls. Uh, again, check out the awesome tunneling Git that I showed earlier on the page. I have a link down in the description below if you want to test out other um, open source versions of this um, webhook to bypass your firewall. They all work. I just don't know which one is like suitable for your conditions. For me, I find Telebit to be the easiest way to get everything all set up. Anyway, that is it for me, guys. If you have any questions about this, hit me up down in the comments below. I will try to answer them or hit me up on Discord. And if you guys are new to the channel, consider subscribing and also hit that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is going to be out. And as say my nerd cave, hack till it hurts.